And I want you to understand that even though the season shifted, there was a continuity. See, when Elijah took up the mantle of Elijah and he struck the water, if you'll notice, Elijah's last miracle became Elisha's first miracle. Now let's pull this into the New Testament. You see, because this is such a picture of what happened with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if I go away, I can send the Holy Spirit to you. Jesus went up. His mantle came down. And even though I'm preaching out of an Old Testament, Testament passage, let me say, what we have received by the Holy Spirit is far more powerful than Elijah's mantle. Come on, inside of you is a curse breaker. Inside of you is a curse destroyer. Come on. He is the one that ends the curse. He's the one that breaks the curse. How many understand Jesus died on the cross so that we don't have to be cursed? Come on, Jesus died, took the curse on himself so we don't have to be cursed. But we still know there's a devil around. I'm telling you, God put the anointing of the devil destroyer on the inside of you. And when the church actually wakes up to what we've got with the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, then we will fulfill the scripture when Jesus said, pick up where I left off. Where did he say that? He said, greater things than I do, you're going to do. Because I go to my father. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's look at this next passage because this is, I think, where you're at. Verse 19. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, please notice the situation of the city is pleasant as my Lord sees. Alaska is beautiful as you can see. But the water is bad and the ground is barren. There's something in the land that is cursed. And he said, bring me a new bowl, which is a representation of prayer. There's bowls in heaven, which are filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. This is a house of prayer. This house was not just built on money. It was built on prayer. It was built on the glory. It was built on the manifestation of the word of the Lord. He said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Who did Jesus say is the salt? Come on, we are. And he took, then he went out to the source of the water or the source of the curse and he cast the salt in there. He cast us in to the very place that the curse is operating. And he said, he made a decree, thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from it. There shall be no more death or barrenness and the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elijah which he spoke. I want you to understand that the purpose of God releasing breakthrough, the purpose of God releasing a double portion anointing is not just so we can walk around with this mantle going, don't I look great? Because in our territory, 40 years ago, we bought a piece of land. We bought 80 acres of land. I can't tell you that story because it's too long. But we bought this 80 acre piece of land and we weren't in our area very long where it was very, very undeveloped. We're about two or three miles from literally the world's most beautiful beaches, sugar white sand, absolutely beautiful. But we discovered after being there for a very short time that even though it was completely undeveloped, there was a lot of stuff there. And by stuff, I mean every kind of cult group you can imagine. Satanists were crucifying animals and leaving their bodies all over the territory. Witches, warlocks, pagan cults, psychic healers, psychic gurus, Santeria voodoo cults, you name it, we had it. And God took this little pioneering prophetic ministry, dropped us down into a territory that was overrun with witchcraft, kind of like Wasilla has been in the past, in the past. And basically here was our prophetic word. You ready? Fight or die. I mean, they were astral projecting into our homes. They left decapitated animals on the doorsteps of our houses. They spilled sacrificial blood all over our church property and wrote curses on our buildings. And honestly, I mean, I was 25, 26 years old when we started pastoring this church. I was running to all my Bible college books going, where did they cover this in class? I was freaked out, honestly. And one day the Lord said to me, Jane, why are you so freaked out by this? And I said, like, the blood, you know, it's horrible. 
And the Lord said, Jane, don't you realize by now that one drop of the blood of Jesus is more powerful than every blood curse, blood oath, blood hex, vex curse that could possibly be spilled out against you. Now rise up and fight back and push those things out of your land. And guess what we did? We engaged, just like you've engaged here. We came up against territorial spirits, just like you have here. I want you to know that we drove every single one of those cult groups out of our area. Every single one of them left because they could no longer operate because our heaven was open and theirs was closed. I want you to also know that we contended and we broke a spirit of poverty off of our land. And in our, in our state, in Florida, there's 67 counties. We were ranked number 64 on the economic scale in Florida. We were one of the poorest counties in Florida. We had the worst school systems. We had a corrupt police department. We had, a, we had a, so much chaos, so much trouble in our county. But I want you to know that when we broke witchcraft, then we went after poverty. That was 20 years ago. Today, our county is now the top revenue producer in the state of Florida. We are ranked number one in the state of Florida for economic growth and development. Our school system is now third in the state. Our sheriff's department is the top sheriff's department in the entire state. And we are now one of the four fastest growing communities, fastest growing counties in all of America. Let me just say what the devil said was impossible. We refused to listen to what his decree was. And we went in and we saw victory and breakthrough against territorial demons that had been there longer than we've been alive. I'm, I'm not making that up. Your pastor's not going to invent a liar to come stand in your pulpit. Now let me just say this. All this stuff with balloons and surveillance. Listen, the Lord spoke to me before the balloon thing ever happened when I was praying about coming up here. And the Lord said, Alaska's called to be a state of watchmen. They're not just going to watch on the land. They're going to watch in the, in the spirit. They're going to watch in the atmosphere. How many believe that God's called you to be a watchman intercessor? This church is a watchman intercessor church. A state of warriors, worshipers, and watchmen. And what are you doing? You're called to prepare the way for the king of glory. You're called to protect the nation from invaders. But Pastor Bruno touched on the Leviathan spirit. I don't have time to, to do a big teaching on Leviathan, but I felt like there was a key here to just show you how what he was hearing was exactly right. Of course, you know that the dragon is um, all through Asia. I do a lot of ministry in Asia. I spent the first two weeks of the year in Korea. But you know that that land bridge is just brought, brings you right to Alaska. And so, of course, the dragon culture, the dragon spirit would come with it, which is a Leviathan spirit. Go read Job chapter 41 and he is called the king of the children of pride it is the picture of an unconquerable foe until jesus conquers him come on people said you'd never be able to do this you had you had pastors i feel like that even cursed you they didn't mean to curse you but they were like yeah no we can't pastors can't do this 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 doesn't happen in alaska Guess what? God loves to turn those decrees upside down. Yeah. 